Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark of You podcast. I'm Megan and, and oh, I messed up. Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark of You podcast. I'm Megan and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy and I'm a reformed Hallmark movie fan. That's not the line. Oh, Sorry. Go again. Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark Review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. And I'm Wendy, and I'm a reformed Hallmark hater. I wrote it in the notes for you. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I remembered it, but yeah, my execution was not great. I'm sorry. Today, we're discussing a new release from Hallmark, Napa Ever After, which originally aired on Saturday, August 26th on the Hallmark Channel. If you want to connect with us outside of the podcast, hey, we would really love to have you do that. I've set a follower goal for Instagram for the month of September. So head on over and follow us on Girls Gone Hallmark. Or if you just want more Megan and Wendy, we are at Megan and Wendy as well. Jump into our Facebook group, Girls Gone Hallmark. It's fun over there. Little Girls Gone Hallmark housekeeping. Let's update the people on our schedule moving forward since this episode's Dropping on a Thursday. What's happening? Next Tuesday, September 5th, we have our very first fan favorite fall Hallmark movie review. And we will be reviewing Falling for You with one baby faced Tyler Hines. Indeed. Throughout September and October. Yes. Getting thank all the fall movies. Yes. Thank you to the suggestions mm -hmm. from our friends over on Instagram who gave us a lineup of movies they wanted to see us review. Yeah, and I haven't seen any of these movies. I'm sure you've seen some of these, I'm right? sure they will seem familiar. I forget until I'm watching them. The names are all very similar. Mm -hmm. So until I'm watching and then I realize, oh, I have seen this. And then on Thursdays, you we will be doing our new release reviews. Yes. Two episodes every week. Two episodes from Girls Gone Hallmark. We did these fan favorite movies all summer long. It was great on a number of levels. One planning wise for us it made it a little bit easier but it was fun to revisit these movies and we got a lot of great feedback because a lot of these movies are this is someone's favorite movie or mm -hmm. one of their favorites so that was really fun we didn't love all of them so if you've missed an episode go back uh, i apologize actually i'm not sorry about what i said about love on the sidelines i meant every word <laughs> the fan favorite movie reviews will continue beyond fall we'll just be switching years to yeah november I'm, I'm excited. so excited. Me too. I'm so excited. I don't know how I went from watching one Hallmark movie. No, actually watching zero Hallmark movies to one. And now I'm watching two at a least. week. Yes. At least. Well, it's been a minute, but there are some Hallmark news and notes to discuss. Okay. Let's start with, I think, a, the big one. Mm. And that is Wanya Lewis is stepping down as the CEO of Hallmark Media. This was met with shock when it was announced a few weeks ago. I will say I was shocked. Yes. I think partly because her contribution to the network has been so positive and so well received. I snicker because some comments say otherwise. Sure. there, But those comments are not our people. Right. They don't like us either. She took over in the wake of Bill Abbott leaving the network and... My biggest question was why? Because it hasn't been that long. It's only been a few years. Mm -hmm. And I think oh, the network has seen growth. Yes, there are those detractors who feel like growth and inclusivity is a bad thing. But mm -hmm. by and large, she's done great things for the network. And we got some answers this week as to why she made that choice. Answers not as juicy as maybe I had hoped. No, she told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, I guess that's their local newspaper, after three years on the job, she feels she's all done. Oh, sorry. She's done all the things she set out to do and fulfilled the mission given to her by her boss. Well, that's, that's not actually it. And she didn't want to leave Atlanta. I think that's the bigger piece. I think so, too. She's like, she's got some like roots in yeah, Atlanta. she didn't want to move to L.A. She was able to work remotely because of the pandemic. But then once they started requiring everyone back in the office, she didn't want to do that. Do you think that's really what it comes down to? Like, she's like, I'm real comfortable working You're at home. You're in your 60s. Why do I need to relocate? She's in her 60s. I get it. But, like, did this you think you were going to work from home forever? Maybe not. But I don't think she, I don't I think it's less the work from home than the relocating across the country. You've got roots. Your family's here. 
I understand not wanting to pick up and move. Yeah. Somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, I was on a Facebook page. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say which one, but the comments about her leaving were like, good riddance. Mm. Good. She's too woke. Mm. I'm like, God. As if the next person is going to revert to yeah. Bill Abbott, great American family style. Mm. I, I think Hallmark has seen this work for them. So I, I, uh, I'm looking yeah. forward to the new direction. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what? did you know Wes Brown? Didn't. <laughs> I read yesterday that he is, okay, Wes Brown from Haul Out the Holly, Haul Out the Holly 2. That's Is it called Haul Out the Holly 2? I guess we'll find out. I don't know if it has a different name than that. Anyway, he's releasing a full-length Christmas album on Christmas Day. Nope, on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, better. I was like, that's too late. Yeah, apparently he is an accomplished jazz musician. Huh. And in 2020, he released a special four-song EP that included three covers, Holly Jolly Christmas, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, and The Christmas Song, but also an original song called Snowed In With You. Have you listened? No, I haven't. I wonder if he has like a Michael Buble sound. Let's, let's find out. I'm going to do the song that has the most listens, and it's a song called Paradise. Okay. Afraid to say I'm feeling the same. I'm into it. I'm super <laughs> into it. Ooh, this photo, alongside his last Christmas, he's in a beanie. This is real wowie zowie. Christmas. Wes Brown's new biggest fan. Wow, his voice is giving like, oh, what's his name? He's like married. He like always, he might be married to he one of those Hallmark sisters. <laughs> what is his name? Brad Paisley. A little bit. Like, and he is married to one of the yeah. Hallmark sisters, by which she means the Williams sister. Doesn't he sound like Brad Paisley a little bit? Yeah, I like that gravelly voice. Though. I was thinking like a country vibe. I was no. expecting Bring Michael it. Buble. I I'm, will be downloading that streaming Thanksgiving Day. Totally. While you're decorating the tree on Thanksgiving Day. My tree will have been up for three weeks I forgot. At that point. <laughs> wow. Well, that, that was an excellent news and note because that's good information. And I've got more good news. Yeah. What? Returning to the Hallmark family, we have one Luke McFarlane coming ooh, ooh, back. Ooh, ooh. He starred in the movie Bros and on the Apple TV series Platonic in his hiatus from Hallmark. And he's coming back. He will star in a movie called Notes of Autumn that also stars Ashley Williams, Marcus Rossner, and Peter Porte. And he gets to be in a same-sex romance in the movie. You might recall that when he left, he said, I think I've told all the stories Hallmark has mm -hmm. for me to tell. And I am glad that he's coming back and he gets to be true to himself. Yes. Because so I'm he's thrilled. not. Yeah. Which is not to say that people can't portray characters who are different from them, but I think he was like, I'm a little tired of being the straight white firefighter. And I love Luke McFarlane. I watched every second of Platonic. Obviously, Rose Byrne and Seth Rogen are the star stars of that show, but he has a leading role. I really loved him in that show. I just love Luke McFarlane. I'm excited he's back. I'm surprised it's only been a year since he left. Yeah, maybe they were like, this is the, we're not just going to throw you in around, mm -hmm. like, this is a great movie. This is a great lineup. To have, I think, four stars working together. Yeah, I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. I think they will be. I'm very excited. There's not even a movie poster out for it yet. So. And I got to tell you, Marcus Rossner is real pretty to look at, too. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to Napa Ever After with a synopsis. All right. A lawyer inherits a family vineyard. While on sabbatical from work to restore the vineyard, she finds a love like she's never known before. This was directed by Alphonse Adetui. It's his 12th directing credit and his third Hallmark movie, which includes Holiday Heritage and A Second Chance at Love. The script was co-written by Nina Weinman and Wendy L. Jackson. I would say Ellie. Ellie Jackson. Yeah, Wendy Ellie Jackson has five writing credits, and this is her first Hallmark movie. She serves as CEO for Auburn Avenue Films. Nina Weinman has 31 writing credits, almost exclusively for the Hallmark Channel, including a movie from our fall fan favorite lineup called Pumpkin Pie Wars. Denise Boutet plays Cassandra. She has 60 acting credits, although this is her first Hallmark movie. But 
She has six credits in 2023 alone. Wow. With something else coming out later this year. Mm -hmm. On Hallmark? No. Oh. This is (laughs) her first for Hallmark. I'd love to see her back. Darlene Cook plays Grandma's bestie, Isabel. She has 47 acting credits, including another mahogany movie called Holiday Heritage. Colin Lawrence. Speaking of firefighters. Uh, Yeah. We need one to put out the flames from this dude. Oh, my God. (laughs) So funny. He plays Witter Alec. He has 138 acting credits, including a starring role in Virgin River, which is a Netflix show that many Hallmark fans like. He's also well-known in the Hallmark world for his role in the Christmas in Evergreen movies, among others. But this is his, this is the best thing he's ever done. So I don't know if you remember, but he was in the early rounds of our Dudes of Hallmark brackets. Yeah, nobody had a fighting chance. I I know. Against Mr. Hines. I know. I know. Was it Hines and Walker in the end? Yeah. What are you going to do? I really feel for a lot of the people in that bracket Mm-hmm. There's just not enough winners. Should we do another one and like take those them out? I don't. That just I don't. That seems weird. A Heinz free bracket. <laughs> Maybe the top four don't get to participate. Oh yeah. Give everyone else a chance. You can't play along because you were in the top four <laughs> the previous it's year. It's like you can't win two years in yeah, a row. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we'll see. You're disqualified for excessive hotness. Okay. Selena Lusaint plays Alex's daughter, Mary, in her very first acting credit. Tiffany Yvonne Cox plays bestie Lena with 30 acting credits. Many of them are guest spots on series. Now, what's your note here? I think she's being criminally underused she as was an actress. Fantastic. I loved her. This was originally titled First Kiss. And it was filmed in Vancouver and the Okanagan Falls, British Columbia area. And finally, See You Later Ranch was used as the winery in this movie. What's your first impression of this movie? Okay. How about you go first? Oh, my first impression is the mahogany line might be Hallmark's best way of telling big stories. Dude, I have something about... <laughs> that is so crazy you said that. I have I have some notes about that. Mm, I have mind some melt. notes about that. I love when that happens. My first impression is give me any movie with a 90s R&B song. Oh. Uh, like, was that SD? Yes. Are you impressed that I knew that, by the way? I am impressed that you knew that. This was like a high school jam for me. I love the song. And while watching this movie where they're like out and the song comes on and the guy's like, that's my jam and gets up to dance. Yeah. It was such a great scene. Yeah. I just freaking loved it. They're like, we're going to a 90s night out. I'm like, I want to go to a 90s night out. Let's do it. Will they play 90s hip hop and R&B for me? Obviously. I would love it. I need to relive my high school days. Do you know that my 30th high school reunion is next month? Are you going? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't Have you decided. gone to any of them? None. Zero. Neither have I. No, I, I'm not really interested. So many mean girls that I graduated with. Yeah, I know. I know. I. It's not about them. It's more about me on why I don't want to go. Yeah, me too. So, I don't know. Hey, what'd you like about this movie? Okay, so it goes with your first impression. And I feel like the mahogany branded movies are more interesting than your typical Hallmark fair. I yeah. think the stories are deeper and they're far more relevant. So something that I often complain about that Hallmark does is they try and do too much in a movie. Mm-hmm. And my complaint about that, sometimes I like it because keep me interested, keep me invested. But often I feel like it's not done well and we don't get to fully realize a lot of these storylines yeah and i'm reminded of unthinkably good things another movie that i think did a lot and did it well and i think telling these stories well doesn't mean you bring them all to a conclusion i don't need you to have wrapped up every detail of every Mm storyline but i want to feel like if you're going to introduce a story to me like you've given that story some consideration like it's not just a a throwaway moment and I think this movie did that really well there's a lot going on she's grappling with taking over the vineyard versus her career as a lawyer Alec is grappling with moving on after losing his wife she's got family issues with her relationship with her grandmother and her mother and her father there's a lot going on and I think they 
gave the appropriate amount of weight to those stories that made me feel invested in them, Mm. I thought they did a good job. I agree. I think they do these movies better. I don't know why. Well, I was wondering why, too. What is it? Who's the production team behind Mahogany? Because they're doing a good job. Yeah, I agree. I agree. In that vein, I feel like the interactions amongst the girlfriends yes. is noteworthy because I feel like their chemistry was like effortless, mm-hmm. supportive. And I think mahogany movies in particular, we see that repeated quite a bit. Mm. I don't feel like we see that in non-mahogany movies. Like we don't see core girlfriends with the exception of the wedding veil. That's what comes to mind. Like really there for each other. Yeah, the girlfriend relationship, I think, was given as much weight as the romantic relationship in Mm -hmm. this movie, which is good because the romantic relationship is new. Right. She needs to have those relationships are still very much important to her. They still are her foundation. Yeah. Yeah. I liked the Isabel character, her grandmother's best friend. I think it tied her relationship to her grandmother it was a nice way to keep her grandmother present in the story even though she had passed Mm -hmm. i like she kind of played that like surrogate grandmother role to her which i really liked and i liked that her character much like the movie we reviewed last week where i said the characters surprised me they didn't do things in the way i've been conditioned to expect them to do she was very much willing to let cassandra come to her own conclusions as much as she knew how important the vineyard was to her grandmother as much as it was important to her she let cassie figure it out yeah i she wasn't afraid to remind her of how important it was to her grandmother or that maybe this was the place she was supposed to be but there wasn't that thing that we see in hallmark that i think the dad did this is what's expected of you right and this is the right choice right and I liked it. I liked it too. Hello to a shirtless Colin. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was such a quick, tiny little scene, but her watching out over the vineyard, looking at him while he is shirtless working out there, (laughs) working in the vineyard. I thought was quite funny. She's like, it's just a beautiful view. Colin Lawrence, let's talk about it. Okay. Has always been a wowie zowie for me, Mm -hmm. but in the Evergreen movies, he's real milk toast. Mm. I enjoy him, but his character is just kind of there. And I, again, talk about criminally underused. In the final Evergreen movie, he only appears via Zoom. Like, oh. only, he must have been somewhere else and couldn't meet COVID requirements yeah. to come back and film. And it is such a shame. They had to wrap up his storyline with Holly Robinson Pete's character. But... In this movie, he brings the heat. And I don't just mean, yes, that shirtless moment's great. There are so many moments where he's just like bringing the wowie zowie. Mm -hmm. But also when he's like, I got you. I will always be here for you. That's my next note. How much do I want someone to say to me? I I got I know. I got you, Megan. When he tells her like how he's feeling towards Mm her, it was like, no misunderstanding, very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. It was such a nice moment. Yes. I really enjoy him. Mm-hmm. He needs to be in more movies. Mm-hmm. To be clear, he works quite a bit. He's 138 acting credits. Okay. But he's not on like a ton of Hallmark movies. He's not like a lead dude. Also, he does have that lead role in Virgin River, which has five seasons. Okay. I don't watch that show. Are you shocked? <laughs> no. On a lighter note, loved Cassie's wardrobe, even when she's in her pajamas. Nice. I agree. Like fully coordinated outfits. I noticed. And too. her friends are like, maybe you could go get dressed. And I'm like, she looks great. I know. <laughs> I thought so too. Hey, I didn't hate Mary, his daughter. I wondered. I enjoyed her. I don't like kids in movies. I She just was like so grown up and sweet, mm-hmm. not annoying. I was here for Mary. She's like, why are you leaving? Are you ready to talk what you wish for? Mm-hmm. I wish Alec hadn't financially invested in the vineyard. Yeah, sticky. Too quick. Your dad came in. Your, it makes a lot of sense for your dad who had this successful legal career 
who is related to you, who feels a lot of responsibility for the fact that his daughter and his wife were taken away from the vineyard. I think it's fine for a father who you have a relationship with to invest in your business. Mm. Now, sure, Alec had a lot of personal investment, but I thought it was real sticky for her to immediately accept his offer. Like she she took her dad's money in the short term. Let Alec be your partner. He knows how to run this right. place. That is his investment. He yeah. knows way more than you. You don't need his money. You need what he knows. You need, you need his knowledge. Yeah, yeah. he can yeah. be your partner. Yeah. But don't take his money. Don't take his savings. He's a single dad with a daughter. Yeah. It yeah. Doesn't. I know. Okay. So, but make this make sense for me, please, because Alec is a software app designer who spends his free time working in the vineyard. Yeah, maybe he like sold something and is just living off royalties from an app he sold. I, he's there a lot. Yes. And for not to be paid. Yeah. Is weird. I mean, I think, he, was he being paid? I don't know. I don't know if he was or not. I just assumed that he was like volunteering his time there. Well, he talked about how much her grandmother meant to him and how she was really important to him. And so I think he felt really connected to the vineyard like family well he really let it go to shit didn't he (laughs) oh no (laughs) i'm just saying everything was in disrepair there like if he was there i know it takes money and like the grandma had taken lots of loans out whatever he did what he could but to expect him to renovate the barn that's not on him i know i know i know but their little gazebo where they were doing movies at was like a storage shed yeah i don't know i don't know i have another like make it make sense for me Hmm. why would cassandra's mom take away the daughter it was like she was from the grandmother like she was like punishing her yeah see this is what i didn't make sense they moved away for the dad's career and never saw the grandmother again. why couldn't they be in each other's lives i don't know because when they leave it's a very quick scene we just see them leaving and we don't really find out until later why they left She doesn't even find out that her grandmother's passed until she gets a phone call from the lawyer handling her estate. Yeah. It just seemed like there was so much love there. The grandmother hunted down the mother's artwork and purchased it anonymously. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they maintain a relationship? I don't know. Why couldn't she visit? Plenty of families don't live near their grandparents and they still visit and have full relationships. It doesn't make sense to me. This is going to be a sticking point for me. Again, two love interests who bicker at the beginning. And oh. I just stop doing that. Like, stop doing that. We are also, our next review is for Falling for You. Mm-hmm. And spoiler alert, there's mm-hmm. a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes this sort of bickering is done well in like a bantery sort of way. And sometimes it's in a mean spirited sort of way. Yes. And I think these two movies leaned a little heavily on one of the characters being a little mean spirited towards the other. Yeah. And in this case, it was Cassie. I get that you're a strong, confident woman and you can do it on your own. Mm-hmm. But there was just a little bit of a snideness almost to the I don't need your help. Right. And the who are you aspect of it. I didn't love that. Yes. And agreed. I need, you see them start to warm up to each other. And I did believe their passion for each other. And I did find their connection very genuine. But you almost have to forget the first half of the movie in order to get there. I agree. Agree. Finally, the last thing. I thought the end wrapped up too quickly. We go from like Cassandra totally in the weeds and then her dad paying for like the repairs and that Alex, I'm not saying Alex, Alex apostrophe S. Yes, his investment. And then boom, they're married. Yeah, I think it should have just ended with her friend's wedding and they're all happy. Mm-hmm. And then that leaves us maybe open for future vineyard mm-hmm. wedding movies. For sure. They didn't need to get married for me. Like, I understand you're trying to sell the, like, now this is a wedding destination, but it would have sold it to me, showing me her friend's beautiful wedding going off without a hitch. Right, exactly. And they're, you know, toasting with a glass of champagne. Mm -hmm. That's all I needed. I agree. All right, let's move on to did you see that? Uh, I I saw nothing. Nothing? Not (laughs) one thing? Okay, I have a small list. I think they used some green screen. I'm not quite sure because seeing that it was... Look out the window? Yeah, it was out the window stuff. Like, it just seemed so obvious to me. I was like, bleh. 
Yeah, like when they're at the vineyard, that all that exterior stuff is shot at the vineyard, but inside the house, they're not using the home at the vineyard right, for shooting. Right, exactly. So it was just this mm. looked weird. Mm-hmm. And I think I watched this on a big TV, like a real big TV. So like it's just so glaringly obvious yes. to me. The next thing, Cassandra with her AirPods dancing and vacuuming, I felt seen. Yeah. I felt like that's very much something I do at my own home. Yes. I just thought it was a real cute scene. Lena's fiance, it's when they go out to that 90s bar and they're getting ready to leave and Lena's like trying to get out of there so Cassie and Alec can like hook up or whatever or whatever, have a moment. Have a moment. And then like the fiance comes running back and he's like, my car won't start. It was a brand new Range Rover. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay. To- Although what? Range Rovers are known for their... They have issues. Maintenance issues. Um, Mary's birthday party, all the balloons, it was so pretty. I was thought, those balloons are making such an impact in this scene. Mm. However, like they were giving out the small, smallest little cups of popcorn. These are, I noticed the little popcorn, but it's a party. It's I know. not like you're sitting down to watch a movie. That's just one of your many snacks. I thought they were at the movie and I was like, what is that popcorn for a movie? I agree. It was like a cup of popcorn. Yes. That was yes. not going to work for me. Right. But yeah, as a snack, kind of cute. And then I thought Cassandra's dad reminded me of Philip Banks, mm-hmm. the dad from mm-hmm. French Prince of Bel Air, who has since passed. I didn't realize, yeah. but I thought like same kind of vibe there oh, as yeah. actor James Avery. That's it. Cool. Nothing groundbreaking. What did you rate Napa Ever After? Okay, I gave it three point seven five, and this is why. I thought it was a mellow movie, not a ton of high drama or high tension mm-hmm. and it was very pretty to look at i gave it four stars i thought it was a, a big wow story. i really liked it wow hey girls gone hallmark is coming up on our one year anniversary kind of we've existed for longer than that and we would love to continue to grow one easy way for you to help us with that is with your ratings and reviews we currently kill it on the podcast charts in both poland and the philippines <laughs> True story. (laughs) And we do chart in the United States and Canada, but we'd love to be the number one Hallmark pod in the U.S. So leave your five-star ratings and reviews in the Apple Podcast app. Yes. If you try and do it online, it's not going to work. Open your Apple Podcast app, find our podcast, scroll down, tap the five stars, and then you can just type in your review. And if you don't know what to say, just let us know your all-time favorite Hallmark movie. Perfect. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.